What does electrical wiring, pots and pans, electromagnets, IUDs for birth control, and the Statue of Liberty have in common? The answer is copper. Hi, my name is Debbie Mitchell. Here at University of Denver, we love copper. You can see that it's on many of our buildings all across campus. Copper is element 29 on the periodic table. Copper is the second most conductive metal, meaning that electricity and heat can pass through copper very easily. Because of copper's very high electrical conductivity, we can use it for a variety of electrical applications. Here's two examples of copper wire. We can wind copper wire in a coil and run electricity through it to create an electromagnet. Behind me is an electromagnet that we use here at University of Denver to study EPR imaging. Here we have copper that's been wound in a coil and we run electricity through it to create a magnetic field perpendicular to the coils of copper. All right, so this is a copper sulfate solution. Copper sulfate is typically used as a bactericide or fungicide. It's added to pools to kill fungi. Copper is an essential nutrient for all biological life. However, if you have too much of copper, it can become toxic. Too much copper will interfere with metabolism and kill our fungi or bacteria. Copper is used in architecture because it's a material that is very resistant to corrosion. The Statue of Liberty is also made of copper. So you might be wondering why the copper roofs on these buildings here at University of Denver are brownish black, whereas copper on other structures such as the Statue of Liberty are green. The answer has to do with differences in humidity and pollution. When copper is initially exposed to air, it can form copper oxide. Copper oxide is a brownish black color. This is what you see at DU. A copper oxide layer has formed Copper oxide can then react with sulfuric acid to form a green patina layer. But where does the sulfuric acid come from to react with the copper oxide? The answer is acid rain. When you burn coal, sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide are given off into the atmosphere. Sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen and water to form sulfuric acid. In environments where there's more water, a higher relative humidity, and more sulfur dioxide pollution from more coal being burned, the patina will form faster. Copper has many applications in our daily life. Copper also has important biological relevance. There is much more to be learned about the element copper.